So here we are with uh, Andrew once more. Hello, Andrew. Hello, everybody. I caught you by surprise, didn't I? You did a bit. <laughs> uh, this and you see Wayland again. Yeah, oh my god. And yet another match in the second board game kick uh, tournament in Okagon. Uh, first round, we see the second match between Malvoli and Kulfel. Uh, the first one was won by... Um, uh, who was it? Malvolio? Malvolio, yeah. By a uh, very nasty scorched earth. Uh, after Kulfel got too uh, greedy with his uh, tinkering. And um, now we're going to see the rematch. And it's going to be Criminal versus Wayland. So, so probably less likely that we're going to see a scorched earth. Probably. But you never know. Or more likely, depends on how many uh, account siphons we say. That is very true. Yeah, interesting starting deck. Yeah, the criminal has an awesome one. Hmm. Some economy. Desperado. But he's going to... Sp yeah. Yeah. Economy, he can get any ice breaking he needs. It's going to be really good. Yeah, really, really it good. was a good mulligan for uh, Kufel too, but uh, yeah, because he got to the wall of, st wall of static and an enigma, so you yeah. can put two different types. Yeah, problem is, um, yeah, he can play both and then take a credit. He can protect everything at the F FAO, so that's good. Yeah, en enigma and wall of static are very good in the opening hand if you can mm. get them. Problem is, whatever is in the uh, headquarters, Malvolio is going to look for it, and then the party will begin. Yeah, and there is a priority requisition there. And if he scores that priority requisition, it's he at a, least has the tie. Yeah. It's going to be really bad for Kufel to get back from that... Uh, I think that priority requisition at the start saved him a bit of time. Yeah, definitely. It, it actually gives him a chance, otherwise, as soon as you get one agenda stolen, and that's going to happen, especially against criminals, yeah. it's over. Yeah, especially with that hand, it's going to be really brutal. And let's see, I'm suspecting a hit on the R&D and then priority wreck on headquarters. Yeah, force activation orders. Good thing that's an enigma, so he wastes a click at least. Yeah. That's the way you play the force activation orders. You force activate yeah, the place you don't want to, the place you really want to run. Definitely. You you get you get a chance of actually trashing it. No, he didn't go for it. Yeah, I, I'm, I think he's pretty sure that he can res it, and he's he might do it to the start of next turn, maybe. Mm. I don't know why he bothered, but yeah, I'm not presuming that he'll do it at the start of next turn. Mm. Classic uh, Wayland until now. Quite a lot of yeah. heavy eyes. I'm, I'm really not sure that it's worth it playing non-classic Wayland. If you want to play non-classic, play Jinteki in the end. <laughs> have, I'm surprised that I haven't seen so many Hasbirods. I guess everybody's afraid of E3 or something. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, because you see a lot of criminals and some E3s, I don't know. Oh, he just ran in the good old fashion. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the uh, Hadrians? Isn't it a bit weird that uh, it's a big barrier and it's a hawk or whatever it is? I always find the artwork really weird. Yeah, but it, uh, if you look at it, uh, let me just bring it up on my screen too. Yeah, he has like his wings spanned and it looks like kind of like a full wall. It's yeah, they're trying to uh, <laughs> give the idea that the hawk is the wall. Hadrian's wall is obviously a reference to the historical Hadrian's wall. Mm. And yeah, the art is just the art wants to be like majestic and aggressive. Okay. It, it wouldn't be that interesting if you would put a wall on it, because <laughs> you already have like TMI, which is like a wall of junk. You have Ice Wall, which is a wall of ice. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Surprisingly yeah. enough. So I'm so, guessing we're going to get to see now a code Blake. Oh no, he's going for the headquarters. Okay, I would expect he would be make, running a maker's eye now. Yeah, I think he wants to get some money first and then uh, run it. It's not, see... He's not getting any money though. He's yeah, just seen a card. We see a good splash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turret. oh really? I didn't notice it. Yeah, he mm -hmm. just got it 
Pity he has an injury in his hand. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still worth it. Yeah. If you get him by surprise, yeah, but if he has the ninja out, it's not even worth playing. Yeah, yeah. If the ninja's out, it's it's dead. But if he installs it, he can't uh, install both the ninja and the corroder, so he buys himself some time, but yeah, mm. not really worth it. I wonder if he'll play the... Uh, yeah, he did. Are you going to play the agenda? He did. Yeah, yeah. Risky move, not enough money to protect that agenda. He has... he can raise that roto turret, but... Uh, uh, risky, yeah, the risky. thing is, he, he knows that uh, he knows that uh, uh, Malvolio is going to run against his hand, so mm. he knows it's not safe there. Still, I mean, it's one in five. I'm not sure it's that safer. Is that is true. Let's see how he goes. Oh boy! <laughs> oh no! Yep. Such a waste. But yeah, he can just install the ninja now. Yeah, yeah actually he shouldn't do it now, because he doesn't have the credits to also run it. He needs one credit, yeah? Yeah. Not two. No, yeah, he needs two, so he can't get him and install and one. Mm -hmm. so, so he Unfortunately... Probably... Yeah, get the money. Unfortunately for Kulfell, he can raise the agenda, so... Yeah, no, it's uh, it put him in a really bad position. And as we've discussed earlier, as soon as uh, as soon as he gets that agenda, it's uh, at least a tie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Kufel is just such in a bad position. He has no money. Mm -hmm. He has that agenda that he cannot score. Uh, Gabe oh. is running like a maniac on his HQ. On the other hand, his HQ is empty from agendas and he hasn't gotten any economica, so something must be coming soon. Yeah, that is true. So if he managed to survive for a little bit, and since... Um, mm, there you go. Another Roto turret. Yeah. Yeah, this won't end well. I uh, when I yeah I don't I don't consider Roto turret a uh, splash worthy card for Wayland at least. Mm, it has a, a cheap cost of one, so it's very splashable. Um, yeah, that is true. It doesn't take much, but uh, yeah, not really worth it in my book. Mm. It's a bit too expensive, and it's like only early game ice. Mm. It is indeed. Almost every other breaker can break it for free. It's not just catastrophic if you manage to get it at the right moment. Yeah, but people, yeah, know how to fend off from it, so... Mm. Shall we see an engine now? I'm guessing we will. There's, like, so many options. He can also go for the Peacock and go for the Maker's Eye on uh, R&D, so he has, like, really a lot of options right now. True. I think we go for the ninja. Yeah, ninja. We got, we're going to see the ninja now. Yeah, he's gonna run. There you go. There uh, goes your agenda. And makes his roto turret that cost him four completely useless. Well, not completely useless. I would. Uh, uh, you, it still costs two to get in for each time, so it makes back its cost basically in two turns, in two right. runs. But, yeah, uh, yeah, but it's, it's really not worth it. Yeah, maybe you can put a pad campaign behind it. That might be worth it. But yeah, yeah, something. I like think that. I, I think I'm the last player in the world who still plays pad campaigns. That is totally not true. <laughs> pad campaigns. I don't think people realize that the, the purpose of a pad campaign is not so much to make you money as is to keep the money of the runner down. Yeah, definitely. If he trashes it, he loses a lot of money. If he doesn't, you just get that money for free. And you really want to put that pad campaign behind some 
very cheap ice. You mean to make the cost to trust it just slightly nastier so that uh, the runner won't, uh, will just ignore it. Yeah, it really depends on how the runner is doing with his economy and uh, yeah, the general state of the game. Uh, Wizard yeah. can trash it pretty decently, but yeah, I, do, yeah. that, if it's I really the like to. In a good economic position, it's not worth the trash. Damage. I really, when I play bad campaigns and stuff, I really I like to put them behind shadows and behind stuff. Yeah, yeah, you get through, but uh, it's costing you more than it's costing me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and he put uh, he just put the roto turret in front of the wall of static, and it's not doing him much. Yeah, I don't really see the point in that. He's just I wasting think he's a credit. Using it, he's using it as bluff. That's what's probably. Happening. Maybe, maybe, but you probably it would be better to put another wall of static there as a bluff, or not as a bluff, just to waste his credit. He's just going to run it again, so it's not much of a bluff. Oh boy, an anonymous tip. Wow, haven't seen that card forever. Uh, I, I've seen it when the NBN deck I was playing against, but really not a good card. <laughs> Depends yeah, on your deck, as I said. The asymmetry between the corp and the runner, because <laughs> and Diesel is an awesome card for the runners, but Anonymous Tip does the exact same thing, but for the corp is complete crap. Yeah, and Diesel costs two influence, doesn't it? Uh, I think it does, but uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah, it does, <laughs> it actually does something. <laughs> I think the Anonymous Tip might work if you have a very streamlined deck that does a lot of combos or one very good combo, and then it makes sense. But uh, if you don't have a particular combo that you're gunning through, it's, it's, you shouldn't just... Put, you just I, I don't think I, I you should think put it in. I think it's worth going for the one-two combo, because that might just lock you out. That's my general view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a forecast here. I think we're going to see a Maker's Eye next turn. Let's see. Oh, man. Fem fatal. Poor uh, Kurfell, even if he managed to get a tool booth out, he's not going to enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I don't know what he'll do. He'll probably play the beanstalk, but then... It depends what... He should play that tool booth, but it depends on where he's gonna play. Mm. I think he's gonna play it on his remote. We'll see. We shall see. Well, you were right about the toll booth. Let's see where he plays it now. Yeah, no, that was pretty much obvious. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's thinking now too, where he wants it. Yeah, I don't think he'll put it uh, next to the Enigma. Oh, he does. That's a good call. Mm -hmm. That just stopped the Maker's Eye. I, I, think, I really think that Marvolio was going for the Maker's Eye. Mm -hmm. Is he going to raise it? No, not worth it. He won't be able to raise a toll booth afterwards. With Criminal, you really... When he runs first, you almost certain he's not where he wants to run. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah, he doesn't run. Nice play, nice play. But this also probably gives a signal to the, co to the uh, um, runner that uh, the other eyes is more important. Let's see if he's going to uh, play it safe or not. I guess he's going to yeah. run it first. He, he, he does have a force activation order, so he might use that now that he knows that that's important. Hmm. Oh no, let's see. Peacock? Oh no, he runs Shoot. in 13. Okay, that's only worth if you have a lot of links though. I think he just got it because it's uh, less influence than the Gordian Blade. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I yeah, I use the peacock really. Yeah, exactly. Why not use the peacock then? Oh, that's going to hurt a bit. At each his own. I mean, these are like personal choices. Mm -hmm. It cost him five to break through the toll booth, yeah, and then it would cost him two more to break through the Enigma, so he just jacked out, he didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Kufel just ran out of money again. Yeah, but he has lots of shipments from Kaguya. <laughs> yeah, I guess he will get to give him getting the money.
Let's see. I'm suspecting that we're going to see him uh, paying the money for the uh, Fem Fatal now and getting that run in. It is probably worth it. He does have the MU right now. Ooh, what's happening? He's going to oh, FAO. He can raise it. Yeah, yeah. But again, waste more money. Yeah, true. No, he actually doesn't want to raise it. Okay. Yeah, he probably he probably took the buff. The buff was probably he has a sneak turn. Exactly, exactly. And he said, no, you don't. Exactly. Good play there. But still, I'm not sure if you want to trust it because when the sneak door beta comes out, you really want to have it there. Uh, I think that win is a uh, okay. Is so then, far distant future that we do not comprehend right now. You should really trust that card now. That's the that's the best purpose of using that uh, card. Just waste the force activation orders because you really don't care about it. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Problem is, how do you defend it? Uh, that, yeah, <laughs> that's not gonna work. That uh, that archer would really be helpful, but uh, yeah. I think the best play he can do is take the credits, discard the discard the uh, anonymous tip, and then next turn get uh, two credits and play the agenda. Uh, sorry, and play the Hadrians. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure he is considering that as well. Or he can just play the Hadrian's naked because the two fourth activation order had been played, so it's likely that he doesn't have another. If he can manage to get uh, that Hadrian's out, mm, he has an opportunity maybe to survive a bit. Yeah, definitely. He needs that Hadrian's out. The problem is if he keeps it in his hand, uh, yeah, Gabe is just gonna keep on running. Yeah, that's true. But he, he has to keep it for one turn, he can't afford to protect it. And he knows yeah, putting that... It, putting it down does not do anything good. Exactly. As I think the cost of the card is... Uh, you start realizing if the card is worth it, depending on how many times you discard it from the game. Yes, and uh, I'm, I'm presuming he discarded Anonymous Tip uh, an impressive amount of times until now. <laughs> That's the reason why I actually stopped using a Trick of Light in one of my Jitneki decks. I realized that I never used it. I got it and I always discarded it. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that is definitely a good metric. You need to really pay attention of how you're using your... Uh, uh, how you... how um, if... sorry. You need to pay attention if your deck works around the cards. Because Trick of Light is really brilliant uh, by itself, but if your deck doesn't work with it in time mind, it just does nothing. Yeah, Trick of Light is definitely one of those uh, uh, cards that your deck has to n not necessarily be the, uh, the central point around the Trick of Light, but you have to take it into account when you... Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So let's see, one click. Yeah, he just wanted to see what he trashed, and uh, he got one credit anyway, so... Yeah, that's the good thing about Desperado. Running on uh, a server you don't know, just to see what it is, is never a waste. Yeah, he has the Melanja, but he can't drop it. Now is the best time to max your uh, Hadrian's and play that Melange. Yeah, that is probably true. So I would say... Yeah, but that means take two credits, maybe three, and do that next turn. No, no, to take two credits, yeah, true. You need to take either two credits or three, or... Um... Yeah, he can't install both of them. Yeah. That's a problem, because yeah. if he installs both of them, he just gets one more credit for his last yeah, deck, yeah. and that's I think you should. I think you should play the Hadrian's, so that uh, he's down, and then he has five cards in his hand, and uh, it's the less chance for the runner to hit the agenda or the melange. Yeah, probably right. But I think he's going to take the credit instead and uh, trust one of the Kaguyas. Let's see. Oh, no. He actually played the Archer. Okay. Yeah, he's saying that he doesn't have any more Forge activation orders and he's going to bluff. Mm -hmm. Problem is, uh, if he has, uh, if he gets uh, Sneak Torbeta, that's a problem then. His Archer is going to get wasted. 
Uh, yeah, I think what we're gonna see right now is uh, quite possibly a. Uh... Oh no, drawing cards. Oh, Mark the box. Wow, interesting. interesting. Yeah, I think that's his. Uh... What what he wants for his rig, Magnum Opus and uh, these three uh, code breakers. Well, definitely you have everything breakers. you need right there. But he won't be able to play the fem if he does it. So. Yeah, but in the long term, the Magnum Opus might uh, make up for that money. I think he should, maybe I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, he called the bluff. See if he can manage to hit one of those nasty things. He really he can afford the agenda. Oh, nice! He's saved. And now we're going to see Hadrian's and uh, Melange. Yeah, in a corporate trouble. Sure, it does absolutely nothing right now. Mm -hmm. Problem is uh, he can't pass the Hadrian's. Cause it's going to cost him, but he can pass it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so if he, if he manages to drain that many credits, it, it's good. And there's no other option right now, so... No. Another good thing is, once he puts down that Atlas, he's just gonna play shipments from Kaguya on on both the Hadrian's Wall and the project. Yeah. yeah. It's like one, one, free, one free advance on the project and one advance on the... one extra advance on Hadrian, so definitely mm. a good move. And he's not putting it down yet. There you go. He did, he's not... He's not putting there. He just wants the extra two clicks uh, to trust, I guess. The other two two clicks cost for the runner. I'm not sure yeah. it's worth it. Just uh, two. Yeah, he can trash it later. Right now, at least it costs two more. Might be worth it. You never know. Not convinced because uh, he leaves himself at risk for his hand. Yeah, his hand has been at risk for some time now. And I think the Melanz is the most important part of his hand at the moment. Uh, well, actually, to be honest, the Project Atlas is because that loses him the entire match, period. Hmm, <laughs> maybe. Let's see. Let's see if the runner will be lucky enough this time. I think he's going. To, he's losing the game uh, anyway. I think he's going to have to win the game, at least, to, for the extra points. He's a very lucky bastard, I have to say. Those shipments from Kaguya are doing one thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So play that melange, man. You know you want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was in a pretty bad position the entire game, so. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if he will remember about the inside job and maybe play Kadushus. Okay, that will last going to be trust. The problem with um, uh, with some of these cards is the, that um, the, the runner can see when you are comfortable at playing cards. So he, the runner can see that you played your cards once you got to 10 credits. I suspect this must be Hadrian's. Yeah, definitely. So you have to take into account the giveaways in the amount of money that you pay. Yeah, he just does a normal run. Okay, well, at least that's something. He's probably going to inside Zabit afterwards. Oh, he's his last click? No, he's not. He's the second click. Yeah. It cost him seven? Yeah, seven to break with a corroder. Mm -hmm. He might just go for it. He has the Magnum Opus, he has the... Yeah, he has yeah. to go for it. Well, it cost him... Uh, 7 plus 2, 9 to break the melange. I think that's worth it. Oh, definitely. Plus 1 infiltration to see it. Yeah. Plus 1 to trash it. So it's pretty, pretty expensive melange, but it really, really ruins yeah. Kufel's day. I think Kufel should uh, really play that Kadushus now at, the, at this uh, place, at this remote. He really needs to be able to, to avoid those inside jobs. Hater is the only thing saving him. Yeah, but again, he can't raise it right now. Mm. Let's see if those Kaguyas will be shown again. He's just so happy that he, he managed to see something else. It's not the same old shipment from Kaguya. <laughs> Apparently, there was a Caduceus, a serpent, in those crates.
Oh, ouch. Now it's get yeah. it's starting to get a bit tight. Yeah, it's it's not good. I'm suspecting he's going to try and play one of the agendas down and hope he Yeah, I'd, I'd play the project Atlas, advance it twice with the Kaguyas. Hmm. If I was in his place, I would be expecting surprises by now, so maybe it would be better to uh, play the agenda you don't want so much. Yeah, but yeah, any agenda that gets stolen loses him the game. True, true, but he still wants to win the game. He, he loses in the set, but he may be able to win the game still. Yeah, yeah. It's hard right now, because it's really hard to think about winning this when you're in such a bad position. Mm -hmm. Oh, he yeah, plays. That's also not a bad move. That's, that's a, no, it's a good move. Actually. Yeah, the only problem is he also installed it. <laughs> yeah. If he actually just installed it uh, by itself, it would have been a good move. Because they uh, would yeah. have forced the runner to run with an inside job. It yeah. would have been brilliant. Yeah, I foresee an inside job now. Yeah. Never forget those inside jobs. Yeah, against criminals, you really need to take them into account. It's a, it's a big part of their strategy. Mm. Had they not been three influence, everybody would be running them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's what uh, I like. The, I think the, the influence system is pretty balanced. Yeah, I think the criminals exactly. have the most plausible cards. Basically, you can take the cards and use them without even needing a combo for them. Yeah, yeah they they don't necessarily super combo. Right now, we do have the con siphon uh, new new event that uh, is ice yeah. and forge activation orders, but that's like one of the few. And and before that we still had the Calvin Siphon and Forge Activation Order, so that is a combo, but yeah, it is, you but, can play either of those cards without needing the other. Yeah, but uh, the, exactly, the, the cards by themselves are so strong, the combo is like it's marginally better, because um, I've never actually seen somebody use a Calvin Siphon this way, it's very rare that it happens. Uh, I, I did it a couple of times. Mm. Most of the time you... Most of the time you just want a Count Siphon to be able to run on any server that uh, he hasn't raised any eyes from. That's the best way to play it, I think. There we go. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. Yeah, if I were him, I would address the corporate trouble, sure, and uh, uh, increase it by one. It's gonna get trashed anyway, it might as well cost three instead of two. No, uh, why... How, the corporate troubleshooter will get trashed now. Yeah, but uh, it's going to cost him to uh, increase the strength of the of the roto turret for any points. Yeah, exactly. If if she should just increase the strength by one. Why? That would mean uh, the, the ah for the ninja. Correct, correct, correct. The, the only problem is uh, he has to spend three instead of two of just trashing the corporate troubleshooter, and uh, so the difference between the corp and the runner is still the same, but the corp loses one more credit. So yeah, might as well just let him in. Hmm. Yeah, this does not look very well. He's going to lose. The, he's lost the match, yeah, but uh, he has still a chance to win the game. Yeah, I think he lose the game too because he can't trust that. Yeah, he's gonna do what I just said. And if he's smart, he's just gonna do one credit. Yeah, there's yeah. no point in doing anymore. Yep, yep. Again, like I said, no biggie because it would have cost him two to trash the corporate troubleshooter by himself. So, yeah. And that uh, and that executive retreat is really not safe, and he can't really score it anytime soon. Yeah, it's just bad. He's looking bad. He's really in the corner. No, no, he's 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 out of this one. And Melanza could save him. 
but uh, I don't see it coming. Yeah, any money card, uh, actually, n not a hedge fund, but a B stock would also be good. A uh, hostile takeover would also be good, but yeah. Yeah, not really, really bad position right now. Problem is Vavolo has everything, but it has more economy, built more built up. Yeah, no, there's there's no way he can lose this one from my point of view. I still think a better idea would have been to play that Caduceus in that server. It's hard to call it. He could he could never. Uh, you, you mean instead of the Hadrian's Wall? No, no, Hadrian's Wall on top of Caduceus. Let's take more time to do it. But be safe yeah, and yeah. case and inside job at least. Yeah, the problem is like we're just seeing right now. He just uh, Marvolio keeps running against Kufel's HQ. He right? does, he does. But you have to take the risk. You have to take the risk. Otherwise, you're just giving him a sure uh, a sure steal. That, that is true. I mean, he really should have expected that. Uh, that inside job, yeah. That inside job. He there was no inside job yet, and you know he's gonna have three of them. So yeah, you need to take them into account. But again, so hard. If yeah, I'm, I don't blame him really. No. When you're in such a bad position, you're just like struggling for choices yeah. that make. I sense. mean, to be fair, if he didn't have that uh, inside job, he could have managed to score that agenda. Yeah, yeah. And he, he did. An and he did pull that inside job in the previous turn. So. Let's see if we're going to see the end of the game now. And there we go. Yes. Yeah, and you see Kufel just saying, hey. He didn't expect it to go. At last. Yeah. Yeah, he just wanted this to end. Okay, so there we have it. Mavolo wins 2 to 1 against Goffel. And uh, both I seem to be taking the news quite well. And uh, thank you very much, Andrew, for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, until next time. <laughs>